What's up everyone? Today we are checking out an in-season review of the 2022 Fuel EX8. We have been riding this bike since the beginning of spring here as fall is coming along. I thought I'd do a six month review as how this bike handles and how this bike has been performing. With Trek releasing many new models, we expect a full refresh of the Fuel EX line, especially after hinting itself with the Fuel EXE, an all new frame style, completely new shape. That being said, the way the supply chain is working now, many brands, including Trek, is doing a Gen series where they're doing a Gen 5 and Gen 6, meaning that a 2022 and a 2020 three model will be running at the same time no longer in 2020s number of form it is now a generation series as they're probably waiting for bikes which have been in production for three months now to still ship over so we're going to see a mix of both the previous gen bikes and we'll see the upcoming new fuel EXs just as they've done with the Merlins and other bikes all right so I have been riding this personal fuel EX8 for all season now all right, so I have been riding the Fuel EX8 all season now. It has been honestly a fantastic bike for me. Previous years, I have been on the Fuel EX 9.8. I've been on a Fuel EX 5, which really started my mountain biking career. And I thought I'd come back from that high-end carbon level to just the high-end aluminum setup to see if there is a, a big noticeable change in the downgrade or if it really needs or requires that full carbon feel. Let's do a quick overview of the specs of this thing. So, this has the XT drivetrain. The Fuel EX8 comes in two models. Used to, I'm not sure if it does anymore. So, this one is the XT model. So, it has full Shimano Dior XT 12 speed. Fast, responsive shifting. I have zero complaints with it. It took a little bit to get used to from coming from that SRAM feel, which just is different, not better, not worse, just a different feel to it. Overall, I do enjoy this XT now. It is very fast and snappy. I've rode XTR and I have an upcoming review with an XTR bike. And it's not a huge downgrade to the XT or a huge upgrade to the XTR. What they've got in this price point package is a really good setup and I really like it. So a quick downgrade I have noticed between this and a Fuli X 9.8 is the brakes. The braking power itself, the calipers themselves, great. I have no issues with it. The levers they've pieced with this one are definitely less to be desired. They're pretty simple feeling. There's a minor amount of adjustment, but they're very almost three finger brake system. When you're used to a higher two or one finger brake system, they feel kind of big and clunky with not as much response to them. Overall, they perform amazingly. If you've never had that higher end brake set, fantastic setup, but uh, I don't know if it's something I'd keep down the line. I may upgrade those, but that being said, I have got used to them. It was very noticeable at the beginning of the year. I could barely use these things, and now it's a fully functional bike. I have no real complaints about it, just pointing them out. Geometry-wise, it feels great. I'm very comfortable on this. It is casual, yet still aggressive when I need. My stem is all the way up. I could easily lower that and get a more aggressive position if I wanted, but I am happy with how it is in the higher position. I prefer a comfier fit. I'm not racing. The suspension setup on it is also really good. I don't know if I notice a huge upgrade or downgrade in the suspension. I think it works really well. I think the weight of the overall bike, which is a combination of that suspension, the frame weight, is adding up you can feel it it feels a little heavier feeling around corners aluminum wheels are not as responsive everything feels a little slower on it and i can definitely notice a little more chatter and vibration to my hands again not huge deal breakers and i don't think i'd be picking them apart if i didn't have previous experience on a fuliax 9.8 with carbon wheels carbon frame and a carbon handlebar where it just felt very smooth no vibrations while riding. I have been able to take this absolutely everywhere, some pretty decent downhills, lots of flat terrain, gravel grinding it out. It is a little slow, but that's more on the tires which are placed with it. If you're doing a lot more of that, I'd switch those out. But overall, trail riding, all mountain, this thing shreds. It goes so fast, it's an easy to feel and use geometry. Current wise works so good. 
I have zero complaints. Honestly, if I were to pick one out, eh, I don't really have one. Might be, no, honestly, I don't have a complaint about this bike. It functions really well. It is tubeless from the box, which to be honest, at the start of the year, it took a long time for that to seal. That was kind of frustrating. I don't think that's more on the bike or me or anyone. That's just tubeless. I'm not a huge fan of it anymore. I used to be, but now the tools, the tubeless setup, everything tubeless costs way more than what I ever would have put into it for flat tubes. I also run at a slightly higher pressure, so I have any, I don't have as much chance to get a puncture than other places. We don't have that many thorny bushes around here. We don't have that many thorny bushes or rocky, harsh terrain that I'd be constantly getting flat. I haven't had any issues with it. I think you're pretty good with tubes or tubeless. I'd probably try out tube again, mainly because I can, and I'd be interested to know if maybe I'm just imagining anything. Maybe changing a tube and getting flats is that drastic. But the setup and like maintenance of tubeless is definitely just as expensive and just as time consuming as a tube change. You just, you know, take it out of the middle of the ride. You know, if you get a flat on a tube, you kind of have to fix it right then. Most tubeless maintenance is topping up fluid and setting it up at the start of the year is done before your ride. Plugs are quick and easy, so they're easy to fix, but they're gonna be most of the time in, out, and you're ready to keep rolling with very little effort, maybe a little pump. I'm excited to see some changes for the next generation of Fuel EX. Taken some strong hints from the Fuel EXE, the electric version they released, and obviously I think it's gonna have a whole new frame shape. Along with most other brands, I think they're gonna continue with this bigger travel setup. So probably 150 mil on the front. Not sure if it'll be 150, 150 or 150, 145 or 140. Could it be like a high tower from Santa Cruz? Suspension's getting that much more efficient. There's no real downside to putting this bigger suspension on there. So why not really? And it's overall a very lightweight bike. So if it's half a pound heavier, or potentially the exact same way it is now with other compromises, you're gonna do really well. This bike is still gonna be available though, so this could be that lower price point. They could end up putting a higher price, lower price, and that'll how they differentiate things. With the continuing parts and supply issue and shipping issues, bike prices are going up and up. Now, a good way to keep costs low and not change things is keep a model which is already in production, nothing changes. And a good way to raise prices without looking like you're raising prices is to increase, is to bring out a whole new model which just started at that price. So it didn't increase, it's just this price. So it's definitely a good sneaky way to roll into a price increase without saying it's a price increase. This is gonna be a great price bike. I wouldn't expect to see too many end of season deals on them being that they're gonna roll into next year potentially. But it also depends on the supply. It also depends how many bikes are coming that your shop's got. Could be an overstock in some bikes now. Definitely, if you're looking for a bike which does everything and may need zero upgrades in the future, the Fuel X8 from Trek is an excellent bike and really is good for a bit of everything. Maybe not a race winner in cross country or downhill, but definitely an excellent option with some options to change on it customizable flip chip, all that stuff, so you can just fine tune a little bit without being too overboard. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Also, we've got the new invisible mount here. The ground was a little soft here, but this worked really well. A couple of grasshoppers. Made of plastic. It fit on there really well. I do kind of wish the pedal was a little flatter with the, the frame, but overall, top-notch quality. Maybe I'll try and set up a website and sell some of them. 